Meta has announced their breakthrough in protein folding. They published the protein structures of a staggering 617 million proteins. What's the big deal? How does it work? And why is Meta spending precious cash on this? I'm Matei and I make videos about AI. In the last few years, Google's DeepMind made a splash with their AlphaFold AI, which was maybe the biggest breakthrough in all of AI research. So let me explain what I mean by this. AI has been really good at certain tasks like chess and playing AlphaGo, but those are games. They're not particularly useful for a practical everyday life. They don't really help us to live a better life. And the other side of AI is really working on making AI as good as a human. A really good example is self-driving cars. They're trying to make AI as good at driving as we are. Another example are language models. They're trying to make machine translation as good as human translation. They're not really gonna translate better than humans. They're just trying to match human performance. So this will be really a big deal for economy where AI will be able to replace a lot of human jobs, but it's not really gonna push the human knowledge any further. It's just gonna replace jobs of ordinary people. But AlphaFold is very different here. It's able to do something that humans can't, and what it's doing is also very, very valuable. AlphaTensor from DeepMind is also another good example of this. It's able to do something that humans were not able to do throughout the research of mathematics. And now, Meta's ESM Fold is taking the progress of AlphaFold further. ESM stands for Evolutionary Scale Modeling. It is not necessarily better than AlphaFold, but it is quite different. AlphaFold is more accurate, but ESM Fold is much faster than AlphaFold, and therefore, they were able to look at a lot more obscure proteins. This is the first large-scale structural characterization of metagenomic proteins, with more than 617 million structures. Let's have a quick look at metagenomics and how the data is generated. So scientists take samples from soil, ocean water, and the gut. They collect all the bacteria, filter it out to remove uh, any junk they don't need. Then they lyse the cells that they are collected uh, to extract the genetic material, then they amplify it in a plasmid form, and then it is sequenced. And then this sequence data was used to generate the 617 million protein structures. So let me do a quick intro into protein biology. If you know all this, feel free to skip ahead based on the chapters below. Proteins are the functional building blocks of all life forms. So how are proteins made? So think about it this way. Each cell in our body has all of the DNA in its nucleus. The DNA is like the master cookbook. So once a cell decides that it needs a particular protein, it opens up this cookbook, the DNA, and then transcribes particular part of it into messenger RNA. The messenger RNA is like a little node in the kitchen that tells the cook to create a particular dish. The messenger RNA is then into translate into proteins. Protein is a string of blocks called amino acids. In order to be functional, a protein needs to fold into its shape. Proteins are coded as a sequence of letters. Each of the 20 amino acids has been assigned a letter. Since protein sequence can be expressed as text, we can employ language models on them. Language models are the AI that has been capturing most of the headlines in the recent months. And I also made several videos about them. So how does it work? Here's a brief description of the ESM2 language model. So what they did was uh, to take protein sequences from the database. These protein sequences are represented as a string of amino acids. The 20 different amino acids represent the 20 different letters. And for the input, they randomly dropped out certain amino acids from the sequence. That was fed into the transformer and via self-supervised learning, the model learned how to predict the missing amino acids. And from this, it also gained insight of the structure of the protein and uh, that was uh, used uh, for the structure projection. In figure 2a is the overall model architecture. The ESM2 is the key innovation of this work, which I already discussed before. Then data from ESM2 module are fed into the folding trunk. The details of this part are not that exciting because essentially it's modified from AlphaFold2. They describe in the appendix that the AlphaFold architecture is split into two major sections, the EVO former and the structure module. And the structure module processes the final representation into 3D coordinates for atomic level predictions. And that doesn't require any changes to be used with the ESM2. So this structural module right here did not require any changes from AlphaFold2. But the EVO former, however, built separate MSA and residue pairwise embedding spaces. So this folding track had to be modified a little bit. The major change that needs to be made in order to adapt the EVO former block to language model features is to remove its dependence on MSA. MSA are multiple sequence alignments and they explain since MSAs are two-dimensional, the EVO former employs axial attention over the columns and rows of the MSA. Since the language model features are one-dimensional, they can replace the axial attention with the standard attention over this feature space. And then all other operations in the EVO former block 
are kept the same. We call this modified EvoFormer the folding trunk. Scaling from 8 million to 15 billion parameters allowed 3D structure prediction at an atomic resolution. The key point they have been making is that accuracy was increasing with scale. Here are a couple of examples that illustrate how the model is getting better with increasing parameters. So here is the model with 8 parameters and all the way to 15 billion parameters. They show examples of two different proteins, 7QQA and T1056. What these pictures represent is the predicted structure versus the experimentally determined structure. The predicted structure is in color and the experimental structure is in grayscale. The color of the predicted structure depends on the PLDDT score, which means predicted local distance difference test. The teal color signifies high confidence and the pink color signifies lower confidence. You can see here for the model with 8 million parameters, there is not a very good overlap between the predicted structure, which is all in pink, and the experimental structure. So this uh, alpha helix here is completely misaligned with the how alpha helix is in the predicted structure. Then the other key parameter to look at is RMSD, which means root mean square deviation of atomic positions. The lower this number is, the closer the experimental and predicted structure are, and it decreases with increasing scale of the model. So here at 35 million, we go from seven to 3.2. So the quality of the structure increases dramatically between this size of the model and this size. And for the second example, the quality of the structure increases between 3 billion parameters and 15 billion parameters. There's a debate in the AI field right now whether scaling is all we need. On one side, you have people who argue that to have super powerful and very useful AI, all we need is more data and more compute power. On the other side, we have people who argue that language models will hit a performance limit and no matter how much more data and compute power you give it, it's not gonna perform any better. They would say that we need a fundamental breakthrough to push artificial intelligence research further. In figure 2b, they compare the performance of ESM fold versus alpha fold 2 and Rosetta fold. The values here are the TM score, which means template modeling score. The higher the number, the better it is. 1.00 would be perfect match with experimental structure. You can see here the ESM fold is almost as good as alpha fold 2 and uh, actually a little bit better than Rosetta fold. For this uh, other data set, uh, it's not as good uh, as alpha fold 2 or Rosetta fold. In figure 3b, they describe the confidence of their predictions. So this is a histogram of all their predictions. So all these bars together are the 670 million proteins. And what is plotted is the frequency of how confident they are in their predictions. This mean PLDDT number means predicted local distance different test. That's just a measure of how confident they are in the predicted structure. In the paper, they define number of 0.7 or higher is a high uh, confidence prediction, and that would be equal to 225 million proteins. A lot of these proteins are more obscure proteins, something that hasn't been covered before. What's cool is that the code and all the protein structures are available to the public to use. So why is Meta doing this work? Why are they spending their precious resources on this type of scientific work? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I think the main incentive is to flex their AI muscle to show the world that they are leaders in AI, just like Google and DeepMind. There is a reason why most of these proteins have not been looked at before. Determining a structure of a protein experimentally is very, very hard. So resources have been used on work with the most potential impact. It makes sense that you want to figure out human proteins first, since they can help us solve diseases. Almost all drugs are chemicals that in some way interact with proteins. Either they make them not work or make them work faster. And to figure this out, researchers often use the 3D protein structure. So back to these obscure proteins from bacteria found in soil, ocean, and gut. The main issue now is how we tackle this enormous basket of data. I can see this knowledge helping at least in three different ways. First, pharma, research, and development. Understanding structures outside of the human genome can lead us to brand new designs. Second, evolutional biology. We can use the protein structure similarities between species to fill in the blanks in evolutional theory. And third, industrial biotechnology. Sometimes some weird organisms can hold precious gifts. Great example is tag polymerase. This protein is from a bacterium that can survive at high temperatures in hot springs. This protein is essential for practical PCR tests, just like the COVID PCR testing. I think it's super exciting that people are being creative and employing something like a language model on biological questions to move the human knowledge further. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.